All right, all right, all right. Matt, the mortgage guy. In today's video, I have a warning to sellers and buyers in a changing real estate market. The decisions you make, the advice you listen to may cost you tens of thousands of dollars. If either the advice is wrong, even well-intentioned people can give bad advice, or you're not listening to any advice at all. You're just going off what you think, right? The market is changing. Please stay tuned. I'm going to go into both sides, buyers and sellers, things you can do, things you can avoid. All right, Matt, the mortgage guy, residential mortgage broker. I get to sit in this amazing seat where I get to watch real estate transactions, thousands of them. I get to work with buyers. I get to work with real estate agents. And I can tell you that in a market where things are changing, it is more important than ever that you pay attention and you listen to the best advice out there from the best professionals out there. I'm not talking me now, right? I'm talking about the real estate agent you choose to work with, you choose to follow. Whether you're on the buy side or the sell side, when the market is changing, you need to listen because what you see and hear in the news, in articles and all that, that's past data. You know, the stuff that gets printed in March is transactions that started in December or January, right? And so that data is relatively old. The winds have changed a little bit, shifted, right? Um, the market's not that much different than it was. But if you, if you make a misstep on the buy side or the sell side, it could cost you tens of thousands. So let's start first on the sell side. Things I'm already seeing, mistakes that are happening on the sell side that are going to cost people dearly, right? Um, you feel that everything around you has sold within nine minutes. It sold for 50000 above list price. So if you saw somebody sell for 800 and then somebody else sell for 840 you talk to your agent and you go, you know what? Let's list at 900, right? I just saw 800 and 840. The market's going like this. Let's list at 900. What I'll tell you first and foremost is that if you misprice a home and if you stick the price too high, what happens is you get less people coming to see it because it appears to be overpriced, which it may or may not be. And then if it sits, if it's on the market for 10, 15, 20, 30 days, it gets a stigma about it, right? Then you lower the price to 869. It's already got a stigma. People have already passed it by and decided against it and gone with something else. So then it might even sit at 869. Then you've got to lower it again to 849, right? And then after three months, you've got an offer for 845 and you're like, I'll take it, right? And you sell it for 845 two and a half months later versus having a professional tell you, listen, the market is not declining, but 840 was a really high price for this neighborhood. It's about the max, right? Let's list at 839 or 849. You list there, more eyeballs are seeing it. It's competitively priced. Somebody comes in and offers you 850 on the very first weekend, right? Versus 845, two and a half months later. That's the kind of stuff I see. And like from, from an outside perspective's perspective looking in, it's like, oh, that's simple, right? Do you want to sell it this weekend for 850? Or do you want to sell it two and a half months from now for 845, right? Truth be told, if the thing is worth 900 or is going to garner 900, you'll get all the offers up front and they'll bid themselves up between 880, 890 and 900, right? But what you're going to miss out on is if the price is closer to 850 and you just haven't come to terms with that and you start at 900, you're going to take longer and you're going to sell for less, right? Because of the stigma, the price reductions, all that other stuff, right? In this specific market, we've seen tons of appreciation and people have been able to list a little bit higher than the last one. And we continue to go up and more and more demand. We'll see that the 700 listing sells for 770. The 740 sells for 800. Then the 775 sells for eight and a quarter. And it keeps going up, right? But we are entering a time where I think demand is waning a little bit because of affordability. More things are coming onto the market. Not a lot, but slowly but surely, we see the weekly data that inventory is rising, right? And so 
as we've seen 775, 800, 825, 850, we might be at a few months or hopefully a few quarters of price stabilization where the next few in that neighborhood might sell at 850. Now, if I told you 850 a year ago, you'd have been ecstatic. Now, all of a sudden, since things have continually gone up, you think 850 is an L, right? It's not an L. Moral of the story, listen to the best real estate agents who tell you, here's where I'm going to price it, why I'm going to price it there, what our strategy is, and we're going to get it home. We're going to get it sold quickly, right? Quickly is not a thing where it's just like, you just want to sell quickly to sell quickly because you've got to move or the agent's got to get paid or something like that. But quick in real estate really matters because stuff that sits starts to get a little bit of rust and mold on it, right? From, from a standpoint of, you know, what buyers think of it for whatever reason, right? I don't know if that's right or wrong, but if you see something listed for 30 days, automatically assumed by the agents on the buy side and by the buyers that there's something wrong with that home. That's just the assumption, right? Whether it's right or wrong. So that's on the sell side. Get the best advice. Don't think that you can use last week, last month, last quarter's data and hotness of the market to price today because the market is changing. We might be going from 12 offers that you would got on your house six weeks ago to three, right? You're still going to get three offers. You're still going to get a great price. You're just not going to get as many. Okay, let's switch our focus to buyers now. Buyers. I'm seeing a mistake made by well-intentioned agents that forever, whatever reason, you know, maybe not full-time, maybe not, you know, looking at the market every day, getting into contract every few days. Not everyone's going to be doing a hundred deals a year as a real estate agent. I understand that. But agents that are working full-time have a couple buyers always in contract at one time, have other buyers where they're putting in offers. They really have a feel for what's going on in the market. They can see, hey, listen, you know, these things used to fly off the shelves. Now all of a sudden this thing's on the market for 10 days or 15 days. It's listed at $7.99. I don't have to offer $8.50 on the $7.99 listing. I might be able to go in at $800. Shoot, if it's sitting there for 30 days, you might be able to offer $785. Maybe they are going to counter you, but let's not assume as a buyer that every property is going to take $50,000 above list, $80,000 above list. That's a mistake I'm seeing made, right? An agent, for whatever reason, you know, whether it's experience or whether it's the amount of deals or whether or not they're full time, they haven't realized that the wind has changed a little bit. Some listings, I understand this, are going to be super competitive. You're going to have to be honest with your client and say, listen, this one's going to take 50,000 above ask, but not all of them, right? And the best advice I can give to you if you're a buyer listening to this is your agent is going to be able to know which is which. They're going to reach out to the list side. The list side is going to say, we've got seven offers all above list on this property already, right? We're going to review these and we're going to make our decision. My seller wants to um, have something signed by Tuesday. Okay, great. That's a competitive one. We're going to have to go all in on that one like we've done in the past. Something else that sat for 20 days, you can call, no offers in hand yet. This person threatened, that person talked about an offer. Okay, completely different story, right? Offer them list or maybe offer them a little bit below list. It sounds crazy in a market as competitive as this one, but it's happening and I see it continuing to happen going forward, right? Again, not all properties, some. Do I see home prices coming down or crash? Absolutely not. It's not what I'm saying. Do I see it leveling off? Yes. Less competition? Yes. A little more inventory? Yes. Demand waning a little bit because not everyone can afford it anymore at higher prices and higher interest rates? Yes. Make sure you're talking to professionals that are all in every single day. They see and feel every little bit of wind change in the market, right? Stuff that happened in February and happened in March has nothing to do with late April, early May real estate. All right. So hopefully this was helpful. Feel free to reach out to me and my team if you have any questions at all. Connect yourself with a great real estate agent. If you don't have one, reach out to my team. We will connect you with a great real estate agent in your market if you're in California. If you're outside of California, 
I'm going to connect you with a great person on our team. They may or may not have a great real estate agent in their market, but it never hurts to try, right? Because an agent is really going to be important more than ever in a changing environment. If you want to get pre-approved, if you want to talk numbers, greatmortgagebroker.com. Fill out a form. We're more than happy to help. And until next time, we going to see.